Hello my soccer universe. I am fully aware of the timing that I am shooting this video, which is Friday afternoon before, before you know the new round in La Liga kicks off is not the most perfect one because I'm talking now about the entirety of uh, round 29 and there might already be another twist in the tail once this is most likely published. I hope it will get out sooner. But A. Hey, it's nicely done, everything in Spain. Not in Portugal, this was the other thing. Uh, shall I wait and get a little bit in? But I think I'm gonna orient myself now on La Liga, on uh, summarizing that. Um, since in Portugal, the, everything that we're interested in is the championship, that already happened and we can already make statements about that. I am wearing Madrid, Real Madrid. I uh, was close to going for the other Madrid team, but then I said, nah. Real Madrid made a statement this round. I think they played twice and for twice I have to say once they only need to play 45 minutes yesterday, yeah. They only played 45 minutes almost as well. I didn't see the game, I saw highlights, but uh looked impressive I have to say what Real Madrid said, but let's get to that. Um, we'll start off on Monday. Levant and Sevilla played out a 1-1 draw. That was dropped points for Sevilla and also the other Sevilla team in a um, Andalusian derby uh, play out a 2-2 draw, which was of the crazy, crazy sort. Um, after Granada takes a lead in the 29th, there was absolutely nothing happening. And it was, um, you know, maybe there could have been a draw 1-1 for Betis Sevilla, but it didn't even look like it. It seems it was headed towards uh, a dirty Granada win. Then Betis gets a penalty. Canales converts, Teo three minutes later makes it 2-1 and everyone thinks now Betis is there. No, Roberto Soldado in stoppage time makes it 2-2. Absolute nuts end to a game that was never ever that um, exciting. I actually saw the last 60 minutes of Espanyol uh, straw at Getafe and I have to say uh, Espanyol didn't look all that out of sorts. I didn't like the jerseys at all. Uh, I'm fine with the pink and the white, but why do they have the black then in there? <laughs> yeah, and then all the blue and white, it, it's just too messy to me. Um, but yeah, uh, they were lucky at the end, Getafe had good, had good chances, but Espanyol hung on for vital points in the relegation battle. Uh, I think at the same time, Villarreal beat Mallorca 1-0. I actually... I didn't intend to, but uh, my wife kind of convinced me. She 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 wanted to have some cuddly time on the couch while I'm watch, watching soccer. She watches something, and she was really into it. So <laughs> let's watch Barcelona leg. Uh, I watched Barcelona leg, and this and boy was I disappointed. Um, when I started really watching. I think uh, before that I watched most of the Bundesliga action. I, I had the Barcelona leg and it's only the but it took a while but then Ansu Fati makes it 1-0 uh, after Fir uh, after Firpo assist and yeah, it was what Walt expect, but uh, Leganes had already huge chances at the beginning of the game that they probably should have converted um, and then Barcelona yeah, took to go but um, didn't look very convincing attack in the second half. Uh, yes, uh, due to sheer individual class, um, Barcelona wins this game, but not because they were impressive. I think it Leganes to me was in a way more impressive, especially how densely they occupied the center with five on the back and then three and two in front. Really kept it tight really kept it tight and gave Barcelona some trouble. But of course, if you have a Lionel Messi up there, if you have um, a Suarez, if you have Griezmann up there, it's bound to happen, although Griezmann was a non-factor. Uh, I really have to say, I mean, Ansu Fati was more uh, dangerous, although Griezmann scored a nice goal that was then ruled out, but then a little bit later, uh, Messi steps up after a penalty was given. I was actually thinking, why? Why don't you give the ball to um, Griezmann to kind of give him, you know, this goal was take, taken away from us because of a very thin offside, of, of, of you take it. Anyway, 2-0 and it's a dirty, 
2-0 win without anyone being impressed. I only thought that Shakira is gonna get shocked when there was her husband uh, lying on the floor after he got the studs uh, below the knee where the Im PK recovered. Nah, was not a good performance. Uh, I have to say, and uh, they look well in Mallorca, they didn't look all that great and now they have to play Sevilla which will be in interesting and you probably know the result by the time it's posted. <laughs> Not very happy about that. Uh, Eibar, Bilbao and it 2-2, then uh, goal is draw for Vigo and Real Valladolid, it's similar to Espanyol, although I think Espanyol's point uh, counts for more than Vigo's. Uh, but Vigo needs points as well. Um, and then the big surprise is that Atletico Madrid steamrolls of Sassuna. Um, didn't look actually quite even for most of the time. Then Joao Felix with a wonderful goal makes it 1 0 at the half. And after the half, after Diego Costa assist, where they suddenly both were in front of goal make it 2-0 uh, and the defending of Osasuna. I think Osasuna is a team that actually looks overall quite all right, but the defending was dreadful. And yeah, uh, the uh, Atletico Madrid basically took them apart. Llorente makes it 3-0. Morata, who had a, whose goal at first was rolled out, but then counted, uh, made it 4-0. And Carrasco makes it 5-0. When have you heard of a 5-0 Atletico win? That has been a while, and you know, everyone says they cannot score goals, suddenly they score goals, and Joao Felicio also suddenly is in there. Has big impact on the, on, on the table for them, as we will see. I saw the second half of Alaves against Real Sociedad, a game that I actually thought will go the other way, but Alaves thoroughly deserved that. Um, that mean they had already a huge chance before they made, made it 1-0. Uh, that was ruled for offside. Then they make the goal in the 56th. It is again uh, ruled out for offside. And I've been waiting for Real Sociedad to launch anything uh, dangerous, but nothing was really coming. Uh, they're having a bad start, I have to say. And when Martin Aguirre uh, Gabiria makes it 2-0, that's a mouthful, uh, make, makes it 2-0. They have Devils and us. It's also an interesting jersey matchup, although I'm not so fond of the Real Sociedad uh, away jerseys in green and light green numbers or some, something like that. And it's not uh, such an iconic look as this one. But Alaves played also a different jersey with blue and some uh, circling. There, uh, there must have been something to it. Uh, some remembrance or whatever that this was done for. And it ends with Real Madrid against Valencia, where um, this was the big one. And Valencia probably could have, should have, have made it 1-0. Uh, they had a big chance. I think Roberto Moreno hit the post and Roberto Moreno makes the 1-0. And then by the slightest of margins, it's offside. This is one of those offsides that is just maddening. Absolutely, absolutely maddening. And uh, yeah. If it's offside, it's offside, I understand, but I, I hate this uh, by millimeters and so on. I, it, if you give me the TV picture at, at, at first, I'm not sure if it's really uh, an offside. So this is where I think, I think the offside line needs to account for the error and therefore needs to be thicker. I'm repeating myself. The offside, there needs to be a margin of error. There is no zero margin of error. There is a large margin of error. And you need to account for that uh, in deciding for offside or not. That's my personal opinion. But I know this is a hard sell uh, for the soccer world. I'm just talking as a mathematician and understanding a little bit about me, uh, statistician. Uh, understanding a little bit of how things are may measured and calculated. Anyway, it doesn't really matter much because in the second half, Real Madrid comes out to play and Karim Benzema makes it 1-0 in the 61st, then Asensio comes on and with his first touch after a really nice assist by Mondi, where he uh, goes past the defender down to the touch and put, puts it back and uh, it's him off the ground and a really nice touch by Asensio, makes it 2-0 and then Asensio with a similar assist to Benzema who makes the goal of the restart, I have to say. He takes it on with the outside of his right foot and volleys it in the net with the left foot in one fluid motion. Wonderful goal. Absolutely stunning. 
and then uh, Lee Kang In gets sent off uh, for for Valencia for Pachacha's being too eager to get the ball and hack down. Uh, I think Serge, Serge Ramos, well, people like to hack him down. So uh, if we look at the table now, not much has changed uh, on the top, except that uh, Barcelona, <laughs> because it's just gameplay, Barcelona's chances of winning just got a little bit, teeny bit bigger, 63 to 37. Um, Sevilla, does not look as secure, but Sevilla and Atletico Madrid look really strong of making the Champions League spots. Uh, Getafe losing points, Real Sociedad lose, losing points definitely hurt them, and there is now a gap opening. Also, that Valencia didn't, didn't win also plays hugely in, into that. I have the feeling that top four is probably how this whole thing will end up in the end. Uh, we have uh, Granada then uh, below, then there's a whole lot shuffling around uh, in midfield. However, let's go for the relegation zone, um, where it gets really, really, really tight. And I mean, 23 points for a last place team at Lega Leganes, that's not a small uh, points total. Uh, Celta Vigo has now a two-point cushion over Mallorca. Espanyol is only three points behind, so Espanyol has a shot. We have to see how things will be playing out. Um, Eibar and Celta, definitely not safe. Real Valladolid probably just has enough cushion to get uh, to stay in La Liga. Very quickly, the results from La Liga 2, um, or the Segunda, uh, you, uh, as you can also call it. Um, uh, let's see, Saragossa gets a win, so they uh, look strong of being promoted, as, as we'll see. Then a uh, duel that I would actually expect in La Liga, Oviedo-La Coruña is a 2-2 and both are seriously relegation threatened. And then Cadiz uh, beats Numancia, so also they look strong. And Mirandes beats Huesca. Mirandes might have a shot at playing next season in La Liga. Let's look at the um, table. We have Cadiz really high up, um, two points clear of Saragossa, and there's five points to the third place. So I think those two teams are the are two that we will see next season. Then there is the fight for the um, promotion playoffs. We have Almeria, Iros, Huesca, Girona, Mirandes currently, uh, with Elche and Rayo definitely not out of it, and maybe Alza's chances even for Gijon, Alcazón, and Ponferradina. Um, but Honestly, almost more exciting is the relegation battle because there are four spots and the teams in there. There is uh, Albaceta, there is Lugo, there is La Coruña, Oviedo, Extremadura and Santander. Uh, Santander and Extremadura don't look all that great, but the rest, I mean from yeah, Tenerife and Oviedo, there's only three points difference. That's between 14 and 20. So that's going to be a dogfight. A dogfight, but not a very exciting one, is also the championship race in Portugal. Um, let's focus on the big boys. Porto has numerous chances, but the ball doesn't want to go in at lowly Avish. I said Porto should easily win that one. Yeah, the chances were there, they just didn't. And so the dead last team gets a point against the first place team. That might work for conf confidence. And then Benfica has one of those really, truly crazy games that um, you just got to be happy you won, won that one. Um, first of all, Rio Ave was for most of, especially the first half, uh, definitely the better team. Uh, uh, Benfica had a goal also ruled out. They take the lead through Medita Remy, uh, uh, Rio Ave, and it could have been even 2-0. Um, if they would have converted uh, their chances. In the second half, Seferovic comes on, makes the goal, and then also a second um, guy come, come, come on, Julian Weigl, uh, makes the second in, in, in the 87th. And in between, um, two, uh, uh, before the first, for first goal, uh, one Rio Ave player was sent off for a second yellow, and then Nuno Santos, uh, also after VAR, is getting set off the referee have, ha, ha, having a rough day, and Rio Ave getting also a third red card, but this is the, uh, this time to the uh, bench. Not 
a good look, I have to say, but Befica gets a win. Uh, Sporting also gets a win, but you know, Famalicão and Braga are still playing, so uh, we have to now look at the table with a little bit salt. Befica and Porto are level on points, and they're both not having great starts. Uh, it's all that even. They are just goal difference separates them. Uh, Porto still giving the slight edge over Benfica there, probably down to due to rating. They are both still miles ahead, ahead of the rest. There's a clear gap uh, of 15 points to Sporting and Braga, which does not speak well of the Port Portuguese League, I have to say. Uh, as I said, Braga, if they win, they would leapfrog Sporting again. Um, but uh, if Family Cow wins, they can draw level with uh, Braga, but not overtake them. Um, yeah, and as you see, Aves has only 14 points down, down there, but they get a point of Porto, so uh, it's all quite interesting. Anyway, let me know which games you watched, if you agree with my assessment of all the games that I talk, talked about. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these, and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there! I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye!